Okay, uh, so let's uh, uh, start. Uh, so uh, yesterday, uh, we basically uh, describe or define or maybe characterize this topology order using a quantum information point of view. Yeah, is using entanglement, whether uh, whether we can whether the system is shorter entangled, longer entangled, etc. Okay, and but the, our discussion is very abstract. Just some, um, we cannot do this. Or we can do that. You know. And uh, today we try to maybe get some more concrete example. So what do you mean by long range entangled? What is the example of a long range uh, entangled states? So certainly, uh, like this, some pattern of up or down, a single state is a product state, so it's not long range entangled. Okay. And then this, uh, uh, so all the stream pointing in the x direction, also like uh, uh, not entangled. Then we may say it's a superposition of a product states, this up and down, maybe entangled. But however, if you do the equal weight superposition of all spin configuration, then it's actually the same as this uh, spin in x direction. So it's not entangled. Okay. So this gives us idea. Uh, if you do superposition, we should do that properly, not too much. If you do too much, we get nothing. So, so we, we sum over a subset of spin configuration. That's a key point. So there's a lot of game to play. Which subset, you know, you can design the model, design interaction, so that the ground state is superposition of some subset. Okay. So one way to do the subset is uh, to include the interaction such that a spin down state want to form a string, close the loops. You can imagine there's some interaction term which favor this uh, uh, spin down state, which form a loop without an end. The string end cost energy, but uh, if no string end, it don't cost energy. And then you also include the interaction where the string can fluctuate without breaking up. So this way we get a superposition of a, a strings which are formed by down spins. Okay. So, uh, so therefore this, uh, uh, that's it. That is a wonderful a spin a wave function, which we think is a long range entangled. That means uh, there is no local unitary transformation which can transform such a wave function into the product states. Why? We'll, we'll, we'll see why, why is that. We can play some games. Maybe here is an equal weight superposition. And we can have a plus or minus superposition where the sign depends on whether the number of loop is even or odd. And uh, then we can also put some phase factor. Actually, one may say, yeah, this kind of uh, superposition is too artificial. You know, what's interaction give you a string? You know, looks like uh, you need a, indeed you need a complicated interaction. But however, this kind of wave function is not so ridiculous. We, we know that in the anti-ferromagnetic states, uh, the spin want to form a singlet. So here is a, like in Cogman lattice, for example, and uh, this, uh, this uh, dimer is a spin singlet. But the spin singlet may fluctuate, this REB states. And so maybe that's a one configuration, this is another configuration, okay. Then if you compare these two configuration, just lay one on top of the other. So we think the red is reference. Then the blue is a fluctuation of a red. And then, compare red with blue, which I lay these two computers together on top of each other, then suddenly see that red and the blue form a string, you know. This, this, here, you can see they form a string. And, uh, and we have a, uh, we have a, this, uh, an, an paired spin, an paired spin is the end of string. You may say, oh, here they also have two ends, but actually this is a, this is a small loop. This uh, go from here to here, then back. So this is a small loop, it's not an. This one is really a end of a, of a loop. So therefore, this uh, dimer fluctuation is uh, described by strings. So dimer fluctuation and string fluctuation are the same. So actually this kind of a uh, uh, dimer, uh, this fl dimer fluctuation is a good approximation of uh, this uh, string liquid. Not exactly, but a pretty good approximation of that. So, 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 so this kind of a, 
uh, string liquid is pretty realistic, <laughs> you know. Uh, so usually, uh, that's typically say we, people, I think you heard a lot of people say we are looking for spin liquid, which may have an interesting thing because a spin liquid is in some sense very much like a string liquid. And, uh, and the string liquid have long entanglement, topology, all that. So, 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 so this is kind of motivation for looking for spin liquid. Okay. And so now let's consider some Hamiltonian, which uh, realize a string liquid. Okay. And the point is that we have local rules because, uh, uh, the string, so the, the, the spin, fluctuating or string fluctuating according to some local rules. One rule is that uh, this, uh, this downspin form a, form a loop with no end. We can imagine we can have a Hamiltonian, local Hamiltonian to enforce such a condition, open end with the cost energy. Then another thing is that uh, we have a local Hamiltonian which is <coughs> break this uh, uh, string up, break up the string and reconnect them this way. So basically, from this kind of connection, from horizontal connection to vertical connection. So we can imagine there's some local Hamiltonian term flipping spin in a certain way and making that can change. Okay. And so, so basically these two dancing rules is that, uh, oh, another dancing rule is that we can add a little small loop, add a loop here and uh, deform the loop. That's also local Hamiltonian. So we want to design Hamiltonian this way, uh, enforcing these local dancing rules. And then you will get a global dancing pattern, which is a superposition of all loops. Yeah, that's just kind of cartoon way to explain what Hamiltonian should do. And, uh, and then, uh, and for the second, uh, for the second, uh, uh, string liquid with plus minus sign, we just need to, uh, change the sign of this term. You know, when the Hamiltonian, which is flipping, reconnect the strings, uh, if you're changing sign of that term, you may, you may add a minus sign here, you know, ground state wave function, then that's give you this, uh, uh, a different wave function. Then I want to emphasize that, uh, uh, the first wave function works in two dimension and three dimension. Uh, however, the, this, uh, the second wave function works in two dimension, but not in three dimension. The third wave function actually do not work in both two and three dimensions. The reason is that, uh, 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 like, a, like a second wave function, uh, reconnection with a training sign. This kind of, uh, uh, uh fluctuation is a so called, there's no frustration in the sense that you can see when you have, will reconnect this. If you look at the picture, the number of strings change by one. Either increase by one or decrease by one, but doesn't matter. In either case, we can change the sign. So therefore, you can you can apply this uh, uh this reconnection many many times, but you get a consistent solution. Whenever you have a what every reconnection you change from even to odd, odd to even, but the even have positive sign, odd have negative sign, which are really compatible with this kind of sign change. However, if it is a phase, it doesn't matter. That do not compatible because. Uh, this kind of reconnection sometimes increase, sometimes decrease. And uh, then the, we have now the phase factor, increase, decrease, gave you different, re, uh, same results, uh, uh, or maybe, yeah, the different results, so then, then things, yeah, they get confused. And also in a three dimension, we could have this kind of overcrossing. In this case, uh, reconnection do not change in number of loops. <laughs> so, so the, so this rule is actually become frustrating and uh, don't work. So it's kind of interesting that uh, there's a, a certain uh, dancing rule, you know, dependent dimensionality. Actually that reflects certain entanglement that appear in two dimension, but do not appear in three dimension. Yeah. And uh, it turns out that uh, uh, this kind of entanglement have emerging the fermion. Emerging fermion is okay to exist in three dimension. And this kind of entanglement have emerged in the semion. Semion cannot exist in three dimension. So that's why this, actually this wave function is inconsistent in three dimension. So everything kind of fit. So that's a just cartoon picture. So now, now it's a, it's a, that's the main thing for today is that a, actually there is a way to have a concrete Hamiltonian to realize that. 
And uh, so the concrete Hamiltonian actually is a pretty simple. We have a spin live on the link. Say I choosing the honeycomb lattice, the link of honeycomb lattice. Then we have a Q term. This Q term is a product of Z operator uh, around each uh, vertex. You can see for each vertex, there are three links attached to it. So there's a three Z operator multiplied together. So this is a product three Z. So what this operator do is following, because the Hamiltonian have this a U, Q, U is big. With minus sign, that means the Hamiltonian say that the Q must be equal to one for the ground state. Okay. The Q equal to one, that means uh, this Z, 3Z should have a two spin, two spin up or no spin up. Yeah. And, uh, oh, sorry, sorry. Two spin down or no spin down. <laughs> spin down is a minus. So when you have a no spin down, so like here, the black dot is spin up, no string. Spin down means a string. So that's a, here there's no string. And we have two spin down, so like this. Yeah, you have a string on the two link which goes through this vertex. So you can see this term enforcing this constraint that uh, on every vertex, either you, you must have an incoming string and outgoing string or no string. We cannot have a single incoming string, no outgoing. Then that's, that's string and the cost energy. So this term enforcing the closed loop condition. And this F term is defined on the plaquette. So this F term is a product of six X operator around the plaquette. So just flip spin around plaquette, that's adding a small loop or deforming a string. So this is like a string hopping. This is a string constraint, and this, this is a string hopping, like right? string fluctuate. And when you have this both term, the ground state, this Hamiltonian is a string liquid. And this Hamiltonian is exact soluble because uh, this Q term, F term commute with each other. And uh, so it's a commuting projector model or stabilizer code model also is, is exact soluble. The ground state basically is a eigen state for both this local f operator and local q operator, and so the eigen the eigen value of this operator just equal to plus minus one. So ground state means that this f and q both equal to one on every side on every link. Yeah. So that is a, a so that is a, a, a irreducible uh, wave function. Okay. And. Uh, so from here, uh, we actually can show that uh, 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 the ground state have full fold degeneracy on the torus. Yeah. Because uh, on the torus, we have uh, four sectors and uh, the string can wrap around whole torus in horizontally or vertically. So there's four sectors. Mm -hmm. And uh, for this uh, four sector, just, one, just for the four sector, the, uh, this, uh, both F and Q have any value one and uh, so they, they have degenerate energy. Yeah, that's it. Yeah. So in the previous page, what's the difference with the k type Tori coding? This is just k type Tori coding. Yeah, right? it's k type Tori so It's just on the Hartman lattice. Actually, Tori code can be defined on, the lat on any lattice. So what do you want to say? It's just the reinterpretation word. This can be derived from string net. Yeah, yeah, no, it's the, the say that. This is a cartoon picture to say we have a ground state have this kind of string liquid ground state. Uh, I just gave you a concrete Hamiltonian. The ground state, this concrete Hamiltonian is a string liquid. Yeah, that's a, that's a point. Reinterpretation, any new? Uh, no, no, you don't have any interpretation. It's just a, you know, here I just say this string liquid is a potentially may have a topology order, have long range entanglement. And then the question is that, uh, can you give me a concrete Hamiltonian who the ground state are indeed a string liquid, whether it's a realizable? Because uh, here I just write down the wave function. You can write down the arbitrary wave function. But, but if you do that arbitrarily, very likely your wave function is not the ground state of any local Hamiltonian. So that is illegal or not realizable. Uh, here, I just say that uh, this kind of string liquid is a realizable. There is a local Hamiltonian <clears throat> which have this string liquid as a ground state. So it's okay. It's, it's a real possible ground state. That's so, another point you should make. Yes. Uh, knowing that the, this model is uh, exactly integrable, 
Yeah. Knowing that this uh, integrable, uh, yeah. this is integrable, is there any interpretation in terms of this uh, string fluctuation picture? Uh, yes. Uh, actually, you can see in the fluctuation, I already say that this kind of uh, reconnection rule with the plus sign, it's, uh, it's consistent. You know, you can you can you you can flash make, make a string fluctuation and add, go in a loop and go back to original configuration. You got a you got a sign plus one sign, so there's no extra sign. So this property is related to this uh, evasolubility. Uh so so if uh, you know if the Hamiltonian this will give you a string reconnection when you go around the loop. They don't come back, then the ground is frustrated. Then it's not soluble. Yeah, but that doesn't look very intuitive. Uh, that it, the, the converse is true, right? Such a, I mean, the non-changing the sign, sign non-changing. To me, it doesn't imply any integrability, of course. But yeah, uh, I don't say integrability. Yeah, it, it have several meanings. And here, I just say that uh, you know this this kind of fluctuation, like uh, taking one step in some direction. You can do this kind of stream crossing in different place and taking many steps. When you're taking many steps, sometimes you find that after many steps, you go back to original string configuration, and hopefully, accumulated the sign for this loop is a one. So that means that the wave function is a uh, self consistent. And this self consistency show imply that uh, this kind of a uh, Hamiltonian term implying uh, implementing this self consistent uh, dancing rule to actually stabilize the code, they they commuting projectors. Yeah. However, if you're going on the loop, you get extra sign like a like a, a fl extra flux, and this kind of uh, dancing rule means uh, those Hamiltonian terms do not commute. It's not commuting projector, and if the commuting projector is soluble, and uh, yeah, you can say that also integrable. But integrable have another meaning from beta ansatz level. It's this very different from the beta ansatz <laughs> integrability. It's just a, it's just a, this a Hamiltonian is a sum of a commuting terms. Yeah. Um, I have a question about the. Uh, so you said the. Some of the string mod models can generalize to 3D and some are not. Yeah. And then about the Tori code, you said like fermions can exist in 2D and 3D. Yes. But if I generalize the string model you wrote down to 3D, then do I just have like electric charge and the flux line, but not yes. fermion? I, uh, yeah, for this particular one, no, you don't have fermion. Yeah. yeah. So and, uh, I, I was curious, like, why you mentioned the fermion there. Uh yeah, oh yeah, that's a maybe mistake. Uh, so actually, there's a uh, for this yeah for this uh, string that uh, uh a string model uh, is also this uh, a torque model, the three D generalization the end of string uh is the boson not fermion, mm. but there's another version uh uh end of string can be fermion, but that, that's that's a more non non trivial. Yes, I see. thank yeah. you. And uh, so at the moment, you know. We just have uh, some kind of a uh, uh, Hamiltonian model realizing string liquid. It did not argue or did not show this string liquid is topology order have long entanglement. We don't show that. But here is a, a way to show that because uh, this uh, this uh, fourth sector for string liquid wave function, there's no string and the string can flash arbitrarily, imply that uh, both Q and F are equal to one on, on this on those of all the four states. So the all the four states are really Ground state, they have same ground state energy. So this really try to show that uh, this uh, uh this uh, tor code model have a full degenerate ground state on the on the on the torus. So that's a uh, yeah that's a sign. Yeah, maybe we have a the ground degenerate. Say maybe it is a top of the order. Yeah. But uh, then uh 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 actually there's a uh, there's a, another thing is that. Uh, there's another sign of topology other, which probably is more experimentally uh, uh, probable. Because the measure degenerate ground state, you know, I don't want to say the, 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 the physicist right mind should not do this <laughs> because it's not measurable. <laughs> After this condemned matter physics should not do this. 
but actually, if you do computer, uh, it's okay. Yeah, you can put a, uh, your system on the torus in the computer, then you can still do that. But, uh, 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 but however, uh, if you study excitation in the Tor code model, there are some interesting uh, feature. Because as I mentioned that the ground state means that this F and Q equal to one, that give us ground state. But we know F and Q have a eigenvalue plus minus one. If we're changing the wave function to make a one Q equal to uh, minus one, then you increase energy by two U. If you make a one F from plus one to minus one, you increase energy by two G. So you can, you can see that uh, that's extension. You can have a quasi party extension because the uh, F and the Q may, may flip sign. The energy gap for the extension will be either 2U or 2G. And when you measure the heat capacity, you will see this activation gap. Uh, with, uh, you'll see the smaller one, either 2U or 2G. When it's smaller, you'll see the activation gap. But then, very interestingly, is that uh, for, there's a reason, for some reason, we can never create a, a single F flip, a single Q flip by, by heating the system with a neutron beam, for example. When you heat the system with a neutron beam, you interact with the spin, and then you make create extension. But for some reason, you can never create a single extension. You always create a two. So therefore, the energy gap in the Hamiltonian spectrum, actually, it's not 2G or 2U. It's double that. It's 4U, 4G. So it's, a, it's something quite interesting. OK. I'm sorry, is G coherent or is it something? Yeah, G is just, a, G just a, this coefficient, the G okay. and the U. So Hamiltonian mm -hmm. have these two, have these two, uh, two terms. Yeah. And uh, so, uh, so therefore, you can, in principle, you can do the neutron scattering, hit the this uh, sample is a neutron and measure the neutron gap. Then you can compute, the, you, you can measure the heat capacity and uh, to measure this excision gap. If the neutron gap and the thermal gap do not agree and differ by two, I think that's the simplest way to see, yeah, you have a fractalization. Yeah, that's a, uh, that's a sign of topology order. So now let's, let's, let's explain why we can never create a single extension, single F or Q flip. The, the reason is that so this is the extension. And uh, the reason is falling. Uh, to flip, to flip F, uh, let me see. Okay, like to flip a Q, we need a string operator. That's the key. So let's uh, describe that. So the string operator is uh, is like this. Yeah, so here's sigma x, the x also sigma x, it's the same thing. So we just apply x along this red line. Then you'll see that uh, originally there's no string, then flipping that, we add the string. Then you can see on this vertex, there's only a one red line, it means q is flipped. On this end, again, one red line, q is flipped. But it, in the middle of a string, the Q is not flipped, so there's no energy cost in the middle of a string. So when you apply the string operator, you always create a two excitation. And the, all those string operators is extended operator, but in the middle, there's no energy, no energy cost. And so, so the string operator not creating a string excitation, creating two point excitation. So it's something special about our code model. You may say, although I don't want to create a a two extension, let's create a one by applying a single X. If you had a single sigma X, you still create a two uh, Q flip, but they are very close, a dipole. So somehow you can never create a, a single Q flip because string always have two end. <laughs> the same thing for the, uh, 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 for the F flip, where we have a string operator on the dual lattice. So this is uh, the center of a hex can form a dual lattice. Okay, and uh, this uh, uh, so this uh, uh, then you can see that uh, uh, on the end of string, one of a spin is a flip, uh, but this is sigma z. Okay, and uh, so so you can see this uh, uh, okay, the end 
the, the string operator at the end do not commute with f. Because f is a sigma x, product sigma x around this loop. And uh, this uh, string have uh, only single sigma z on this, uh, on this link. So the single sigma, single sigma z, the anti commute. So therefore, this kind of sigma z string flip this uh, f, uh, uh, f operator. So therefore, this uh, that's a that's a that's flip f that's create another particle. They call it m particle, and this uh, end for this is, at, at the vertex they call it e particle. Yeah. And then you can imagine we can put the two strings together to form bound state of m and e. So it's here. So we have uh, this uh, 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 e string. Then we draw a framing of E string. Framing means that we display string a little bit in some arbitrary direction, but a fixed mm -hmm. arbitrary direction. Then there's a framing of this red string is using this blue line. Happen can be viewed as a, a string on dual lattice. Actually, there's a framing cut through these two legs. So that means that on these two legs, we add a M string, so sigma Z. And that's basically called a, a epsilon string, or maybe I should call F string later. Uh, this is F string. So this is a combination. So that's, so all those things are, can create uh, excitations in this whole code model. And we see that they, they all create in pairs. And so, so, so this topologic, this excitation, which cannot be created alone, is called topologic station. And, uh, and existing topologic station also sign with topology order. Okay. Oh. So, uh, so obviously, you know, uh, uh, the product of these two string operator gave you the third string operator. So almost like a fusion rule. If you, if you are bound state of E particle, that's end of E string and M particle, which is an M string, the bound state, these two particles gave you this epsilon particle. That's the end of this uh, epsilon string. Okay. So formally, we can write uh, the some kind of fusion rule. This uh, E and M give you epsilon, E and E give you trivial, actually. The two string together get no string. So there's some uh, fusion rules, some fusion algebra. So you can still see the sign of fusion category here. But using this operator, actually, we can rigorously show that uh, the grounds they didn't say is robust against the, uh, against the perturbation in, in, in some degree. Okay, so so why we have a four-fold degeneracy? There's a algebraic way to see there's a, a four-fold degeneracy on the torus. That is a, a that is a, the following. Uh, actually, if this string not open from a closed string or loops, the E string loop, actually E string loop commute with Hamiltonian. It's really because uh, I said, I just explained here that, uh, uh, so let's consider Q operator. Q is a product of sigma Z. Then for every Q operator, we have a sigma Z on this uh, three side. But uh, this E string is a sigma X on this uh, red line. You can see this, this uh, Q operator and the E string always have a two overlap. Each overlap, sigma z, sigma s give you a minus sign when they commute, and two overlap give you a plus sign, so they, they really commute. So similarly uh, for the other string, and so it just uh, it just commute, okay. And uh, so therefore, uh, so this kind of like some kind of symmetry, yeah. And uh, then then we can consider a long string, a loop of E string, which go around the torus in one direction, and M string go around torus in the other direction. In this configuration, very interesting. This E string and M string have only one intersection. And remember, if you, if you, they do, if both of strings are, 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 are contractible, then either they have no intersection or they have two intersections. There's no way to have a one intersection. But when both strings have this uh, non contrable topology, <laughs> you can have situation one intersection. It's very special. Then that means that these two string operator anti commute. But these two strings are both commute with Hamiltonian. So therefore, Hamiltonian commute with the two operator. And these two operators anti commute. 
So therefore, eigenstate state of Hamiltonian must from reputation of two anti commuting uh, operator, which is some kind of high simple algebra, which uh, have only one reducible rotation, which is two dimensional. So, so ground state density must be two dimensional at least. And then we have another set of uh, algebra, which is uh, uh, the M is horizontal, E is vertical. <laughs> Then the same story. So actually, the two sets of operator commute this Hamiltonian. These two sets do not commute among themselves. That's how we get the four forty nine. So this kind of algebraic way to see that. Yes. Uh, in defining the fermion, you mentioned that the framing is important. Like, yeah. Can I always put the consistent framing, whatever the manifold I'm putting the theory on? Like torus, I think I don't have a problem, but maybe like climb bottle. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah. Uh, uh, okay. Uh, yeah, you asked a very interesting question. And, uh, uh but, but uh, I need to phrase that, uh, uh, differently. Um, so the, 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 the background of the question is following. Uh, there's a, uh, there's a standard, uh, understanding that is a, for, for zero is a fermions. The theory is consistent only on some kind of spin manifold. Yeah. And if, uh, uh, if, uh, if, uh, if a fermion, if a manifold, space time manifold is now spin, it's inconsistent. Okay. And then, uh, but when you have a bosonic system, bosonic system can define any manifold, space time manifold. And then, but then you may have an issue that uh, you have a bosonic topology that have emerging fermion. Then, but you know your original system, original system can be defined any space time manifold. But when you have emerging fermions, so suddenly you say the spin manifold is a, a non-spin manifold is illegal. You know what that means? Uh, I have understanding of this uh, from passing point of view. That means uh, when you have emerging the uh, a fermion, uh, uh, then the partition function of this uh, kind of uh, system. On non spin manifold equal to zero. So that means, uh, uh, equal to zero really means, uh, that's very formal. But physically really means that uh, on the non spin manifold, uh, the system must contain a fermion word line or something, uh, something like that. It's very much like uh, in a spin one half system, uh, we have spin liquid of spin one half on the out by out the lattice. You must have a single unpaired spin. So this is kind of similar. So there's a, a non-spin manifold in space-time. It's kind of like out of all the lattice. You must have you must have something, some some fermion somewhere, you know, to uh yeah, that 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 is a uh so that uh, uh how this uh, spin manifold requirement em uh, emerge from this uh, system. Yeah, that's a very interesting. Thank you. Yeah. Okay. However, this algebraic argument allows to show that uh, the ground state dependency remain there even when we add the perturbation. So let's imagine we add some perturbation here. Then we can choose our string not do not come close to the perturbation. <laughs> then it still commute with a Hamiltonian in in the unperturbed region, and uh, so so the argument still works. So as long your perturbation I kind of in the local region, they don't cut. You you have room to draw a string without overlap with perturbation. You have exactly the other thing. So it's kind of interesting. But certainly, when you have perturbation which is wrap around the system, yeah, you may you yeah you may have some trouble. But at least uh, here is a very interesting uh point. Some uh, compact uh, localized perturbation just cannot lift the other thing for this kind of very special symmetry. And this very special symmetry generated by, by those loop operators is called a one symmetry. So it's a, it's higher symmetry. And this is a, I think in this paper, uh, this, this kind of thing was studied, but they call this a, a gauge like symmetry. And, uh, in a, in a second paper, and uh, there's a very extensive discussion of this type of thing. And also compare that to the, uh, to the ordinary global symmetry. So review a lot of a lot of similarity in physics. So so after the second paper, the uh this uh, this uh, field of higher symmetry just take off. So everybody study that, yeah. And uh, so I emphasize that uh, 
uh, in order to have this one symmetry, we should have this kind of computation relation for arbitrary closed loops. So it's, it's not like ordinary symmetry. You have one operator coming to Hamiltonian, then you have symmetry. Here, that's we have all kind of loop operator. They all come out to Hamiltonian. Then that's what we say we have, we have this uh, so-called uh, one symmetry. And uh, so, uh, uh, so actually the main point of the first paper is that uh, uh, you try to propose that the topology order actually is coming from this kind of uh, symmetry, so coming from this gauge-like symmetry. And but here I want to emphasize that uh, uh, although uh, power code model have this symmetry, this uh, this uh, one symmetry, and uh, we can explain the degeneracy using this uh, algebra using one symmetry. But the, the trouble is that even we after we break this one symmetry, <laughs> the topology is still there. So uh, so it's kind of uh, 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 tricky, you know. On one hand, uh, you know, when you have one symmetry, uh, you can get top logic order. But even when you break it, <laughs> you still get top logic order. So the reason and the course became a little bit tricky. Yeah. And uh, so, so let's explore this direction a little bit more. Uh, so actually, this uh, topological ground dependency can be viewed as a spontaneous uh, higher symmetry breaking. Yeah. And uh, so, uh, so basically, that's in line of this uh, first paper. We say that, uh, yeah, we, the, we have a Hamiltonian with some higher symmetry. And it, if this higher symmetry is spontaneously broken, then you get a, a degenerate ground state. Yeah. And uh, the reason for that is a uh, question. Yeah. This previous, previous slide. Yeah. So I understand that you, you mean. In the topological order of the state, you create this uh, new symmetry called one symmetry. Yes. And the, the the last line you said you can even break this one symmetry and this still ground state to remain exactly. Yeah, exactly. Remember, degenerate. Not exact, but have exponential splitting. Exponentially uh, small splitting. Not, but not no longer question, exact. My simple question is how. How do you break, or the, what's the meaning of break this one? Uh, it's just like breaking all the symmetry, just add some perturbation in the Hamiltonian. You said the perturbation can be confined in, in the. Yeah, if perturbation confined, you can draw a loop, avoid perturbation, so that symmetry is still exact. So, but somehow, but you can add a perturbation which you kind of fill the system. Uh -huh. <laughs> then there's a no loop, can avoid, no string which can avoid so you, perturbation, you, you, then you break them completely. You destroy some loop. That's the meaning of uh, breaking. Yeah, that's right. You can add a, a perturbation of, of impurity, which you break all the loops. All the loops. Yeah, you break all the loops. You can see if you only add a perturbation if, in if the you, local region, then you the loop which can do not touch this region. Uh, then that loop is not affected. But if you if you destroy some part of part of loops, then still you have one symmetry. Uh, no, I don't want to say that. What I try to say, let me answer it another way. You can add a partition on every site. Then in that case, uh, all the loop is uh, uh, destroyed. Yeah, uh, not disappeared. I mean, this relation is broken uh, for all the loops. Yeah, you can you can add a partition to the Hamiltonian so that a non loop commute with Hamiltonian. Yeah. But then you claim. Even in that case, still ground state degeneracy. You still have ground state degeneracy, but not exact. But you have, but have exponentially small splitting. So that the, the any configura configuration which has any loop is not any more ground state. No, not not ground state. Yeah, it's a, it's become more complicated. Right. Yeah, the the, the model is not soluble. Okay. But however, imagine you can put this model in the in the computer to analyze it, this non solid model still gave you almost the exact degenerate ground state. It's a kind of exponential uh, degeneracy. It's on a small splitting. Just put it in the thermodynamic limit, which would become exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah, that's that's a claim. And it's exponentially. Exponentially, not in algebra. It's really exponential. Yeah. Yeah, this is a, a 
So actually, this is a, a, a kind of a, a, a surprise from topology order. Well, Hamiltonian have no symmetry, but in large system sites, you have a exponential close degeneracy. That's a, so why that's a possible, you know, it's kind of strange. And, uh, and here, yeah, we, we didn't really explain that, uh, but uh, at least we, we show something which make it more plausible. Yeah. Uh, and, uh, yeah, please. Yeah, so, the, uh, uh, so one way, one common way to understand this topological order state is to use uh, partial description with gauge. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, but the, the last line of the previous slide uh, means that if I do not have gauge symmetry, uh, still topological order is already fine. Uh, okay, yeah. Uh, there are several uh, issues here. Uh, very interesting question. And uh, when you have a lattice gate theory, for example, a lattice Z two gate theory, mm. then the ground state are degenerate. Mm. Okay, and then, but this uh, this kind of degenerate ground state for the lattice Z two gate theory actually is uh, coming from topology order. Yes. That means uh, if you break the gauge symmetry at the lattice level for the lattice gate theory, uh, you still have same topology. You still have a same degeneracy. Yes, and. Uh, but this DRC means that the uh, low energy effective theory is a gauge theory. Mm -hmm. So that means that uh, in a lattice gauge theory, if you break the gauge symmetry at the lattice level, you still have a same effective gauge theory at the low energy. Mm -hmm. So so the emerging the gauge symmetry at the low energy is a topologically robust. You can mm -hmm. break so you can break the gauge symmetry at the lattice level. So a little bit weird. That is a uh, uh, the lattice model without gauge symmetry can give rise to effective theory with a gauge symmetry. Mm -hmm. So the gauge symmetry can be emergent. Mm -hmm. So that's another way to say the topology order. Actually, emergent gauge symmetry is another way to say, yeah, we have emerged, we have a topology order. Yeah. And uh, so, but the, but the, the point of view is that uh, the lattice gauge theory don't need to have a gauge symmetry. You know, we don't need a lattice gauge theory, is I'm saying, you know. Sure. Arbitrary lattice model mm. can have emergent gauge theory, can describe low energy uh, effective theory with gauge field. Mm. We don't need a lattice of gauge symmetry to do that. Yeah. <laughs> That's a very good question. So, so whether you know topology order is some kind of low energy uh, phenomenon. So. So what is the low energy effect theory for the system have a topology order? And for the for the Z2 string liquid we talk about, the answer is yes, the low energy effect theory is the lattice gauge theory. It's, it's a gauge theory, not lattice, it's a gauge theory, Z2 gauge theory. But however, there are topology order uh, whose low energy effect is not gauge theory. It's not even background written theory. Tell me something uh, more strange. And uh, so actually can be something we don't even have a formulation. Yeah. Um, and uh, here I want to say that, uh, so when you have a symmetry, what do you mean by spontaneously broken of that symmetry? It really means that uh, uh, we have a one ground state. Uh, we have a ground state energy. Thing. Okay, and, uh, and then uh, we have a one ground state. Uh, then when you do sim transformation, this sim transformation can map one ground state to another ground state, a different ground state, and that's it. That's a that's a very simple way to understand what the symmetry breaking really means. Okay, and so uh, uh, so therefore uh, so therefore the for the for the higher symmetry, this one symmetry, one form symmetry, uh, is same thing. Yeah, this uh, uh the, the ground state, the sim transformation, this loop. But the loop wrap on the whole system can map one ground state to another ground state. But here's a, there's a one shuttle state. That is, a, we have to allow a space to have some topology. <laughs> because if space have a spherical topology, the ground state energy, ground state is unique. There's no degeneracy. So we, we don't have such a feature that uh, one symmetry is map, one ground state is map to another ground state by symmetry transformation. But however, when the when the space is a torus, then we have non-trivial loops. 
when suddenly uh, we have some kind of non-trivial transformation mapping ground state to another ground state. So, so this is a this kind of new feature. Uh, the space the, the space topology is important to see this uh, spontaneous symmetry breaking of a higher uh, symmetry. That just doesn't matter. So, so, so indeed, uh, if you do have uh, this uh, one symmetry, the topology order can be viewed as a spontaneous breaking of one symmetry. But if you don't have one symmetry, so now you can say that uh, if you don't have one symmetry at the largest level, then as you go down low energy, there's an emerging one symmetry <laughs> at the middle energy scale. When you go down even lower energy, uh, this emerging one symmetry is spontaneously broken. And uh, so you can understand the topology order uh, this way. Okay. Then there's a similar question. Well, the every topology order can be viewed as a broken of some kind of a one symmetry or two symmetry or whatever. Actually, one symmetry, two symmetry are described by this uh, one group. No, I've seen. no, one symmetry are described by two group, two symmetry are described by three group. Actually, this shift of a level. And, uh, so then, then this, uh, uh, then this uh, spun has breaking of a uh, one symmetry or two symmetry would give you this, uh, a uh, higher gate theory is a, a two gate theory, three gate theory. And then you may say, well, maybe this higher gate theory describe all the topology order. Uh, no, I think a topology also richer than that. There are topology order which do not correspond to any higher gate theory. So actually, it's a, this also why I try to say that the tensor category theory is uh, useful because that is a, a most general language to cover all topology order. Certainly, you can use a one gate theory, two gate theory to do that, but only to cover some a subset of a topology order. Yeah, that's all. But also, a very very rich topology order. Yeah. Question. Yeah. Uh, physically, how you can break uh, this one symmetry spontaneously yeah. by lowering just temperature? System should choose one of the. No, it's not temperature change. So here we already call the zero temperature ground state. So we're oh, toning the parameter, okay. like changing magnetic but, field. I see. You know, but speed you, you the system. At intermediate energy scale. Uh, intermediate energy scale really means that. Uh, 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 but besides that question, my original uh, question is how you can uh, break uh, this one symmetry spontaneously. In yeah, it's the same thing as uh, making long range entanglement. Yeah, here. Some of a subset of spin configuration actually give you a long range entanglement, but long range entanglement means you're spontaneously breaking certain maybe one symmetry or two symmetry. But this is very indirect, I know. So actually, the system should choose you among the several uh, degenerate ground state. Uh, systems should choose you just the one unique uh, uh, ground state. My question is how system can yeah approach okay that? yeah. So in, it is a, it's a, it's a very uh, interesting question. And uh, so, yeah, this uh, first uh, uh, summing over subset spin configuration is the answer to your question. But uh, not in, in, the, in the form uh, uh, you ask your question. Because uh, spontaneous symmetry breaking is some kind of give us a picture of some other parameter, some other big non-zero, then there's a, uh, there's a low, a low energy manifold of other parameter given the say and uh, those kind of picture. And, uh, so indeed, uh, we, we can, we can, uh, describe, uh, thing in that language. But that really became so called a string field theory. I mean, this string are really super string theory. The super string theory has string field theory. In that case, uh, the basic object is a, is a string. Our field theory is not a, it's not a function of a point, but a function of a string configuration. And the string configuration is infinite dimensional manifold. And the field are defined on this infinite dimensional manifold. So there's a field theory on the infinite dimensional manifold. And, and in that language, then there's a, uh, there's a string condensation, actually. It's a superposition of string. It's a string condensation. And then there's a string other parameter in the string field. And the, then your language would, uh, would work. But one need to go to this uh, infinite dimensional field theory, like a string field theory, 
to formulate that idea. Actually, there's a people try to doing that. And uh, uh, I don't know whether that is convenient or not convenient. The reason is that in ordinary field theory, you know the local interaction, just a phi square, phi cube, those are local interaction. But in a string field, what do you mean by local interaction? You know, the two string, if the part of the two string contact means that close, that the interaction. So, so this local interaction in the string field configuration space is pretty complicated. And writing down this uh, local interaction term in the string field theory, I don't know. It's a, to me, it's a, it's very challenging. So actually, uh, it's coming back to maybe I make some comment. That's a, it's a, we really, let me put this way. Let's pretend that we really hate string field theory, <laughs> and uh, then we, we want to find something else. Not you, I'm using ordinary field theory to describe a string field theory, which looks impossible, but somehow. It is possible that answers gauge theory using this redundancy of a gauge field. Somehow, this gauge theory happened to describe string field theory, and there the locality is much easier to do. We know what what is the local term in gauge theory, how to add the local term, and uh, it's much easier. It's actually amazing that uh, I don't know. Can I say that? That's uh, we we know. Uh, Gate theory before we know scalar theory, you know, Maxwell theory is pretty early. <laughs> but anyway, uh, this, uh, so we, we actually know gate theory for a long time, but, uh, but, uh, 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 but only later we have this string configuration, a uh, string potential field theory. And, uh, then we realize that this uh, gate theory actually is the field theory version of a string field theory. But maybe in a condensed states or something. Yeah. So this, uh, uh, but, but indeed the, uh, uh, the, the intuition race is very interesting. And, uh, maybe there's some direction one can do that, but it's also kind of difficult. It's not, not, not a trivial problem. Uh, okay. Yeah, please. So, along the same direction. So the, uh, if I consider a G to gauge theory, uh, and then, by turning on some local uh, interaction, I can make a confinement, deconfinement uh, phase transition. Yes. Uh, and then your uh, one symmetry, spontaneous symmetry broken phase, uh, or the, the, the symmetry breaking uh, sounds connected to the this confinement, deconfinement transition. Uh, is it true or uh, can you comment on this? Yeah, uh, it's a difficult one. <laughs> uh, Answer yes or no. Okay. The point is that uh, for the confirmed decom transition can be viewed as a as a transition between topology ordered state to state with no topology order. Right. From that point of view, we don't even have a symmetry. There's no symmetry to start with, and we still we can we already have this transition. Hmm. So therefore, from this point of view, uh, this uh, transition that chain topology order. Do not need to be viewed from this uh, some spontaneous symmetry breaking point of view. Mm. It, it's, it's just a change of topology order. But however, if your Hamiltonian always have a, a, a say one symmetry mm. when you're changing the parameters, mm. then indeed uh, uh, for the Hamiltonian with the one symmetry, you can mm. change in parameter mm. to have a, a phase transition which is changing from one symmetry breaking state to one symmetry unbroken states. Mm -hmm. And that transition is a is a confirmed decommand transition. Also, this tra transition which change the topology order. Okay. So in that case, uh, the answer is yes. Okay. Okay. So it's very tricky. Uh, it's really about uh, because if one symmetry is emerging, then then there's an issue about the near transition. Do you still have a emerging symmetry or you lose emerging symmetry? Yeah, this things became more complicated. Yeah. Yeah, just, okay. just just one question about how this um, may apply to like uh, some other systems. So, I mean, would you say that your past work, I mean, your classic past work on the topological degeneracy of you know, Laughlin fractional quantum all state, I mean, would you say that that's one of like the earlier example of 
uh, spontaneously broken one symmetry? Oh, uh, I mean, algebraically, it seems yes. like everything fits. Yeah. Uh, so actually, is uh, the answer is yes, uh, but certainly at the beginning, uh, with for the quantum Hall state, they also have top long order, also have a ground state degeneracy, but uh, at the beginning, we we did not view it from this one symmetry point of view. Even nowadays, I think uh, not many people view it from that point of view because uh, I think uh, indeed for the for the quantum Hall states, uh, there is an emerging one symmetry at the low energy, but however, this emerging one symmetry is uh, anomalous. It's not a uh, it's not anomaly free one symmetry, and. Uh, yeah, that's my understanding. Yeah, so it's a it's a more general or uh, uh, one symmetry. Uh, is this because of the broken timer symmetry or? Uh, no, because of the end of string is a is a onion, right? And uh, this onion have a non-trivial mutual st statistic with itself, and uh, and that gives rise to anomaly. Yeah. So actually, the the end of string. The fractional statistics for at the end of string imply that that string generate anomalous one symmetry. Yeah. So that's from that point of view. Okay, thank you. So, uh, so here I just say that we have uh, this uh, a string operator with what end of string is E type, M type. I think now they we call F type particle. There's some particles. And uh, certainly, the string operator is a bosonic, just a, a, a bunch of spin flip. So as a total, is a bosonic operator. And we know that a string operator creates two topological station. So these two topological station, E and E together, should be boson. But then that leaves some room. If E and E bounce the to boson, E is a cell, maybe boson, maybe fermion. It's a, so how do you know? Uh, statistics for single e. How to how to do that? Okay, and uh, yeah, this is kind of frustrating because uh, you know what is a Fermi statistics? You say oh, there's a if wave function anti symmetric is Fermi statistic, but we don't have a this wave function with a e as a coordinate. We have wave function in terms of spins, but not in terms of this uh, position for e. You know. And uh, I think in the, that's what you learn in the college. So in the PhD, we say, oh, fermion is something corresponding to Grassmannian field. Okay. Then there's no Grassmannian field. You just have a spin. So, so we don't know what the E is. What's uh, fermion? So it's a, it's a kind of tricky. <laughs> but the point I trying to make is that so the, uh, uh, you know, this is a more standard definition of a Fermi statistic. It's a little bit of a formal. So it's a it's not like experimental detection, and uh, so it's a it's hard to implement uh, in this uh, in some situation like this, yeah. And uh, so then we come up with uh, this uh, uh, the algebra of a uh, uh, hopping operator. You know, the 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 string operator have a two creating two a pair of e particle, but you can also say that uh, this string operator. Uh, it's a hopping operator. It's changing e particle from one position to another position. Okay, so this open string operator is a hopping operator for the e particle. Then, then there's a uh, there's a point of view is that uh, actually the statistics of a particle is encoded in this hopping operator. If you know the hopping operator, then you, you can construct their algebra. This algebra tell you what is statistics. So the idea is really this. So suppose we have a four four site, this A, B, C, D. Originally you have two particles at A and D. Then we have a hopping operator hopping from particle from A to B. So and then we have another hopping operator from B to C. So this black one go move from A to C here. Then we have another hopping operator hops from D to B. So at the end we get this configuration. However, these are three oper hopping operator can be applied in, in different order. We apply this uh, B to D first, and the B to C second, then the white one becomes on the top. Then at last, we do A to B at last. Then you can see that uh, we have same initial configuration, but the final configuration have a black and white exchange. 
So therefore, if these two hopping process have an opposite sign, uh, compare their sign, if, if their sign difference have a minus sign, that's a fermion. Uh, if no sign difference, it's a, it's a ball sign. Actually, in general, there's a chirality in, in here. So this is, there could be an arbitrary phase, then you get anion. So this is the kind of using the algebra of a hopping operator, you can get, get statistics. And indeed, actually, because we already have a string operator, and we just apply the string operator to uh, uh, use the algebra, indeed we find that for the E string operator, the end of string E is a boson. For the, this combined string operator, this epsilon string operator or F string operator, uh, uh, from hopping algebra, there's an actual minus sign. So indeed, it's a, it's a fermion. So this way is a more precise way to, uh, to derive that the, the, the end of string is a boson of fermion. You know, I think the colloquium a few years ago, we're using some cartoon picture to explain that. So this is a, a more formal way uh, to derive this. Okay. And uh, so, uh, yeah, so I think I, I think I will stop here. And so we'll maybe take a five minutes uh, break. Yeah, and uh, we will meet eleven ten. Yeah, yeah eleven ten. Okay. Hmm. Let me see. I need to. Oh, this is a. And to switch my, my slides. <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh, this I finished this part, so I need to use another slide. Oh, yes. Sir. Yeah. This. Uh. Uh. No. This one. Yeah. No. No. This uh, next slide. So. Yeah, yeah. You know, actually, originally I'm thinking to skip the microscopic because we don't really. Yeah, I mean, I will emphasize on the macroscopic one. Like yeah, but but then the then I feel that the, if I directly cover macroscopic, then it's very abstract. Yeah, yeah, yeah. there's there's no model, no last, no no content. You know they. I mean, I say, I say that suddenly there's yeah, a lot of things is, uh, no, no, it's not, sorry. Yeah. Uh, a lot of new things suddenly jump up from things from nowhere. Yeah. Then I say, I, maybe I should describe this as a microscopic example. Mm -hmm. Then, then later we will describe this as a macroscopic thing. It looks, all oh, looks very strange. Mm -hmm. But uh, when you have those examples, then it looks more reasonable. Yeah. <laughs> Otherwise, it's difficult. It's more Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So, so that's a part I kind of uh, really impressed by my limitations. Mm. They don't need a microsecond model. Okay. They can think very abstractly, and those concepts seems very natural. You know, just a, yeah, it's a very natural to have all this structure. You know, and uh, the. Yeah, if you're comfortable, you can think about that, the intuition, all, all that. And, uh, but, uh, physics is the kind of, uh, yeah. I yeah, I wouldn't the model, otherwise you couldn't think. <laughs> but sometimes a model can be constraining. So I need to, but like the broader, yeah, you have a model, then just try to wave your hand vigorously, <laughs> try to go beyond the model. <laughs> yeah, but I, I, ever we do feel this may be, more comfortable, yeah. If you do so absolutely abstractly, it's just uh, a. <laughs> people are more familiar with the coding code and so on. Yeah. So, yeah. So all this usually prepare. Yeah, I think this is my real thing. On uh, uh, later another slide, uh, another part. You know, uh, so all the previous three hours I really try to prepare for for this <laughs> for this uh, more abstract one. Yeah. 
and then the catalytic yeah, part will, will they'll follow this the, yeah 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 so these are like a more macroscopic description of topology order then from this more macroscopic description we have to have a holographic picture for symmetry then 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 to the primary to the gapless yeah that's a that's kind of thing yeah yeah so yeah so this kind of holographic picture is not not coming from nowhere there's a there's a lot a lot of previous experience somehow led to to, to this picture but this picture is quite strange it's a different from yeah <laughs> So yesterday I sent you the email. Yeah, I, I, yeah, I, I got it. Yeah, if you need more. Yeah, sure. Right yeah. Because you're in the trouble, you might want to. Exactly. We'll try to figure out. We'll try to install that. We'll yeah. see what happens. Yeah. yeah. Thank you very much. Yeah. Thank you. No, this is open. Yeah, I will. Yeah, okay, yeah. So, yeah. Yeah, you, you started from the time of system, and then you introduce the uh, and then you finally go to the end of the system. So, uh, changing the uh, top of the top of the end of the system. Uh, how do you interpret in terms of the original theory of the timer? Oh, uh, yeah. The, the timer is something like a background, like a vacuum. The timer is fluctuating, it's kind of condensing. And then the, then in the timer liquid, there's a defect. It turns out that uh, if, uh, if compared to timer configuration, this a difference of time condition is a string. If this string have an, this and have to be the site with no timer. So so that like a defect in the timer. So and this uh, so 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 actually uh like in the spin in the in the spin system, timer means a spin up, spin down from a singlet. We have unpaired the spin. That means the timer don't go there. It turns out that this unpaired spin. It's always like a end of a, this a string from timer model. Yeah, and also I have some difficulty um, in visualizing the introducing of the uh, one string in one configuration. We understand all the things. Yeah. Now, the RVD, which you want to write, yeah. Is a domain of all those uh, exactly, yeah. So, one string at one configuration, so you mean that, yeah, yeah, it's always so, yeah, it's difficult to think, yeah, it's a little non trivial in the sense that we have a, a RB, it's not a string, it doesn't look, does not look like a string, but there's one way to make it into a string, means that. We take a particular configuration as a reference point. Mm. And uh, then for every other timer configuration, we compare that with our reference configuration. And this comparison gave us a string. So the difference of a two timer configuration is, uh, is described by, by, by string, by loops. So therefore, when the when timer can fluctuate, then its comparison with the reference configuration is always string, and the string also fluctuate. So in some sense, the uh, we can view the timer fluctuation as a string fluctuation. But uh, there's a difference that uh, uh, there's only certain special kind of string appear in this comparison. So it's uh, not superposition of all the loops. So sometimes uh, the results are different, you know. But uh, sometimes there's enough of a loop fluctuation, so the timer liquid uh, is a string liquid, and uh, yeah, there is there is some difference, uh, but the difference is more technical. Yeah. So that's why the timer liquid uh, usually have an emerging Z two gauge theory is because of that. Okay, yeah, maybe you should uh, start. Okay, so uh, 
you know, in the uh, in the last three hours, uh, we discussed the the uh, spontaneous breaking and this uh, uh, some kind of microscopic uh, description of a topology order, so using the entanglement of quantum information point of view or lattice model, those kind of things. And uh, so, so those discussions try to build some kind of uh, experience or some kind of uh, examples uh, for this uh, more abstract and macroscopic description of topology order. And uh, it's kind of like uh, when we describe a, su a superconductor, we can directly de describe uh, the zero conductivity uh, quantization vortex without mentioning this uh, microscopic lattice model, without mentioning the electron pairing. So there's a macroscope theory uh, for this uh, uh, superconductor. And similarly for topology order, there's a microscopic one, we can see the lattice picture, and there's a macroscopic one, which you don't see the lattice, but somehow there's some way to describe topology order. So, uh, so I'm going to, so now I'm going to, uh, to present this uh, microscopic picture. And uh, just like a, 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 a superfluid, uh, there's a way to describe a superfluid using microscope picture, like a boson condensation, superposition of all boson configuration. And there's a description of superfluid using macroscopic one, that's like a zero viscosity and the composition vortex. So similarly, there's a macroscopic characterization of topology order. Actually, this come out early because, uh, 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 yeah, we first come up with this kind of thing. So as I mentioned, uh, uh, we first have this uh, ground degeneracy, which is a topological degeneracy. Okay. But however, uh, there is a problem. You know, topology order is actually is very rich. And the ground degeneracy, just some integers, and uh, not looks, do not have enough information to describe a tablo uh, to, to distinguish all different topology orders. Indeed, that's the case. That's the case. There are topology orders whose ground degeneracy are totally different, are totally the same. So that you are different topology order with the same ground degeneracy. So we need more data. So actually, one way to get more data uh, is that uh, introducing this uh, so-called moduli space. So that is the space of all the local gap time So that's uh, that kind of moduli space. But uh, the model space from condensed matter phase is too complicated, and uh, so we 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 don't do not, do not want to talk about that. And uh, so so then we uh so we consider a continuous space manifold, uh, n-dimensional manifold with a metric g i j. So it's not lattice model anymore. But then we pretend this g i j is some kind of lattice coupling constant. When we're changing the metric, we are changing the some coupling constant the lattice. So, so and this way we're thinking lattice model is uh, closer to something we know in the mathematics. And uh, so we will do that. Uh, certainly, why the two are related, I don't know. But uh, but this is maybe a really really big question. In the lattice model, is not the manifold, is not the metric space. But somehow the metric space emerges from a lattice model. This is a big question for quantum gravity, how that happens. So we don't know, we didn't solve quantum gravity, so we skip that question and we pretend this uh, lattice model corresponds to the metric uh, in the manifold. So changing metric like changing coupling counter, we just pretend that. And it seems to work, so, so we, we, we go. We kind of carry on through this. So, properties are uh, local. Uh, local, yeah. And uh, for example, uh, you have a lattice model where the, there's a coupling x direction, y direction are different. Then that's like a, you have metric which x, y are different. <laughs> so, kind of like that. So, so that's a, so that is a, a idea. Like, why, why do you think you have this physical space? Like Why do you assume that you have a diffeomorphism invariance? If you're coming from a lattice, then no. it's not there at all, right? Not it's at all. It's just a, yeah. a cheat or? It's a cheat. <laughs> okay, yeah. Uh, actually, it's not cheating. And, uh, but we also cheating. We, we, we didn't derive anything. Okay. But we know the reason. We know the answer. But, uh, 
but we, we cannot prove the answer. The answer is the liquid I just mentioned last yesterday. Uh, when the when the system uh, when the when the when the ground state can dissolve product states, it means uh, uh, it's it's a it shows some continuum structure, no foliation. You know the the fractal phase, like a layered quantum Hall state, have a foliation, and because of foliation structure, dissolving products into it with changing foliation, then it's a then it's something different. Okay, and the manifold is like a continuum smooth small liquid, like no foliation structure, and in the lattice level, no foliation structure is a phrased as a ability to dissolve product states. I think this is crucial. Uh, uh, any quantum uh, many body states which can dissolve product state, maybe that's the origin of emergent for a uh, manifold or metric structure. Uh, so this uh, continuum manifold is a proper model uh, for this. You know, yeah, uh, yeah, the, yeah, that means quantum liquid is the uh, origin of emergent manifold. If you don't have a quantum liquid, have some other foliation or some other entanglement structure, the, the emergent space will be different. Actually, this being really interesting. What kind of entanglement you can have at the lattice level? And, uh, and that's correspond to what kind of a continuum picture? Yeah, that's really a lot of fun, you know. Uh, but uh, we believe that uh, these uh, dissolving product states gave rise to this uh, the ordinary metric manifold. But how to prove that? Certainly, yeah, we, we have some idea. We, uh, okay, we think we believe that maybe from this direction, maybe one can come up with a proof. Yeah. Okay, so so then we have a modular space. Okay, and uh, then 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 for every point in the modular space, like you have a particular Hamiltonian, then you have suppose you have a topology order, then you have a you have degenerate ground state subspace. So there's a vector space corresponding to degenerate subspace, that's a ground state. And uh, so, so therefore, every point in the modular space, we have a vector space describing ground state subspace. Then we have vector bundle over moduli space, and that's it. So, and uh, the modular space may have a non-trivial topology. And so this vector bundle can be non-trivial. And uh, so, so then, so that is this vector bundle on modular space is actual data. The original degeneracy is just a dimension of this vector bundle. And, uh, and, uh, but uh, even, yeah, with the same dimension vector bundle, the vector bundle have a different twist, like uh, this different twist, and uh, so that's actual data. Okay, so that's a general. So this really uh, things I try to say, you know, using this uh, entanglement, we just say, oh, there's a long entanglement, but we don't have a quantitative description. Now we try to come up with some quantitative description of the pattern entanglement. So via this vector bundle on modular space, that may classify or characterize this, uh, 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 this uh, long range entanglement. And uh, so, so, so now there are some, some, de some, some details. You know, we don't have vector bundles. That means uh, when you go around the, the loops, this, uh, this basis of this vector start to twist. You get non abelian barrier phase, and that's unitary matrix. And this, this unitary matrix uh, characterize the vector bundle, how they are twisted around. So what this unitary matrix looks like? Uh, the first, uh, I want to say that uh, there's a diagonal U1 phase. This overall U phase. This unit matrix is, is a U, U n, for example. The U n can be U real as U one times S U n, and this U one part is a non-universal. So that is a, a, a for different loops, uh, you get different U one phase. Okay, it's a, it's non-universal. But the however, uh, but the however, the non-abelian part. This SUN part is universal. Okay. So especially for the contractible loop, if the, if the loop is contractible, this non-abelian non part is trivial. 
So when you when you in, in the modular space, when you go around the contrast loop, you get only pure yuan phase. There's no non-abelian part. Now why? The reason is following. You can see, suppose when you go around this uh, loop, you get some non-abelian uh, phase. Okay. Then you can imagine you have a time-dependent system, which has go, just go around this uh, control loop over and over again. Okay. So people doing that in time phase a lot, you're using the laser with different frequency. But we know that when you, when you average over these uh, uh, many, many loops, you get effective time, time independent Hamiltonian. Okay. Coming from this, uh, this, uh, this uh, time dependent perturbation. Then what happens is that if this, uh, if this loop gives you a non abelian phase, then the effective Hamiltonian coming from this uh, uh, time dependent perturbation would connect this, uh, this non diagonal term that's a split Granzi de Energy. <laughs> and we already know that uh, the Granzi de Energy is robust against any local perturbation, but for the contrast loop, this time dependent thing only gave you local perturbation in the, for the effective static Hamiltonian. So there's a contradiction. So therefore, uh, there's a for contrast loop in a modular space is a pure Yuan phase. Yeah, uh, this is very important. And, uh, and what is this Yuan phase? So let's consider the two dimensional uh, space. Suppose our space is two dimensional sigma G is some kind of uh, uh, genius C manifold. And then we have a, a small loop in the modular space, and that is S1. So the total adding this small loop, we have a G, sigma G times S1. So then, so this, this describe, describe a loop in modular space, but I view this loop as a three dimensional space with some it's time depend, uh, time dependence. Then the, this U1, particular U1 phase of the going through this control loop, Turns out to be there's a there's a term which is a guess a volume term times the energy density so we can ignore that, but this is UN phase the UN phase is a gravitational change time term with a coefficient. <laughs> so why is that? Yeah, though there's a, some arguments so maybe let me not explain here. It's a so it's a it's a it's a gravitational change time term, and uh, this coefficient is called the chiral central charge. Yeah. So, so uh, omega three is the you want Chan Simon or? No, it's a gravitational Chan term. Ah. Uh, it's a normalization is that uh, the D omega three is a contraction class. Uh, so, so that's a normalized in this particular way. And uh, so this is uh, the coefficient have two times over two times four and this, this is C became chiral standard charge with this normalization. Okay. So here we can see that uh, this uh, chiral standard charge is important uh, quantities. Somehow it appears in this uh, fire bundle on the vector bundle in modular space. It's something nice. Yes. So this, well, that identical thing, do you, does it, does it, I guess it doesn't depend on the size of the S1. No. Right. But yeah. then if you, as you smoothly shrink the S1, it's not going to change, but then when you actually, but oh, even though it's contractible, I'm when you sorry, actually yeah. contract it. Yeah, <laughs> for contractible, this, this one indeed uh, changes. Yeah, and uh, uh, because, uh, 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 you know, when you shrink uh, this uh, S1, uh, uh, yeah, this quantity is going, going to change. The, the, okay. the point is really falling. Oh, that's, uh, the, uh, for the quantum pulse, this is really like, uh, this is the effective like grounding for the quantum pulse states. And uh, usually, usually for topological quantum field theory, the partition function should be topological invariance. But uh, for the for topological quantum field theory with a non-zero Cartesian charge, they are not topological invariant. Mm -hmm. You know, for different dimensions, they are different. Yeah. And only only the one higher dimension one is contraction class. That one is topological invariant. So there's some shuttle So so this kind of uh, shuttle tape of topological quantum field theory is realized in condensed matter in this fashion. Yeah, that's my point. Okay. Yeah. So this this part, this structure is well known in TKFT. But uh, in, in condensed matter, it's just a some contrast loop in the modular space, this vector bundle, and that one is associated with, with this quantity. So this okay. is connection between condensed matter and the TKFT. Yeah. Okay. And then there's a then there's a if you if you go around the non-contrast loops. 
then we could have a non-diagonal unitary matrix. Yeah. And so this SUN part starts up here. Okay. And uh, and we know that the pi one of this uh, 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 modular space is a mapping class group. There's some, there's some shuttle here, but let me just say that it's a, some kind of mapping class group. And uh, so therefore, this U from this non contact loop, actually is a representation of this mapping galaxy is pi one of modular space. And actually it's a project representation because the total U overall U on phase is uh, ambiguous, is a uh, non-universal. So strict speaking, it's a, it's a project representation. So therefore, so therefore, this vector bundle is characterized by the project representation of a mapping class group, and also characterized by this uh, U1 part is a Cairo Sunday shot. So there's two data. One is a project representation of a mapping class group, another is a U1 part is a Cairo Sunday charge. These two data is the actual thing we get from this kind of consideration. The claim, I mean, conjecture is that uh, the vector bundle um, on this modular space uh, completely characterize topology order. This is still a conjecture. We don't know whether it's really true or not. And uh, uh, I'm, there's I'm a, um, yeah, just a moment. So uh, here I want to say the following. Uh, there's a weaker version of the conjecture. It means uh, this uh, space manifold is a torus. Yeah, that's a that's more familiar mapping class group. And uh, so for a while, people more more of mystery. Maybe if, even for torus, that's enough to cover everything. But uh, uh, but uh, 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 a few years ago, the P found an example. The mapping class group representation on the torus is not enough. There are topology orders, different topology orders have same mapping class group representation. And uh, so so this uh, this uh, this original version of conjecture is uh, that we have to consider all possible space manifold, like in two dimension. Not only torus, genius two Riemann surface and such. So actually, we studied the, the genius two Riemann surface. We find the mapping class representation of genius two Riemann surface for this counter example resolving. You know, they, they indeed have different mapping class representation for this counter example. Uh, uh, so so we, yeah, we need to go to some more uh, uh, more complex space. So what was the what was the starting point of deriving this? Uh, uh, I mean the result of a partition function explicitly. This one. Yes. Where did you start? Oh, this uh, this one is like a adiabatic uh, uh, evolution. So we have a we have this uh, uh, we have this uh, Hamiltonian with energy gap. We evolve that adiabatic adiabatically, then going back to the going to the same Hamiltonian. But I mean, the uh, which model you started from? Uh, any model like quantum Hall state, for example, which I did not discuss. And this the Tor code, a... you can do this for Tor code model, but, but for Tor code model, Cairo center equal to zero, so you're supposed to get nothing. And which is true, actually, for Tor code model, we don't have that because it's commuting projector, you cannot generate this term. For quantum Hall states, uh, uh, if you do that, uh, so basically, for quantum Hall state, if you do this adiabatic evolution, you get some phase factor in the in the partition function. But this adiabatic evolution corresponds to space time with the sigma g times s one. That's a really just what you have. And then this lattice model have emerging the space time matrix. This emerging space time matrix from lattice model would give rise to this uh, uh, gravitational transform term. So that is a that is the kind of a, a calculation we try to do. Yeah. So you started from some bulk, uh, maybe timer spin liquid system. Yeah. And then, in the origin, in terms of original variable, what is the C? Uh, you, that's that C is something you need to compute. You know, when you do this as uh, adiabatic uh, evolution, you see whether there's a curve, there's a U on phase or not. If you have U on phase, then it means you have a C. Otherwise, you don't have a C. But but this is non-trivial because uh, you need to to see to get a C, you need to have this uh, omega three. You need to know the emerging curvature, emerging matrix. Because on a lattice model, you don't have a matrix. You you should have emerging matrix. Then you have a C. But I guess that you expressly introduced the metric. As the the coupling, the local coupling. Yeah, so you you have a coupling. The yeah, that's good. Metric there. Yeah, yes, thank you. Uh, uh, there are some like quantum Hall states. 
is the quantum Hausa is not defined on the lattice, defined in the continuous space with the metric. So you can have a you can have a metric coupled to quantum house states. Then this one really works. But if your starting point is a lattice model, then you don't have a metric. But then there's an emerging the metric. Then there's a actual steps. So uh, uh, to check this, and uh, but actually there's a uh, there's a way to 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 do this is from edge states. There's thermal hall conductance. There, there's other way to to compute the C from condensed matter point of view. It's more convenient, not from this gravitational transformation term. Gravitational transformation term is a uh, harder. We, we, in condensed matter system, it's hard to do this way. But there's other way to compute the pericenter charge. Yes. Yeah, I trust you all the correspondence, but uh, I was curious whether this uh, was really derived uh, starting from some uh, I yeah. Know, lattice model. So, uh, okay, let, 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 very good question. Thank you. Uh, so it's a, uh, uh, so let's try to say how, how we come up with this. And, uh, so there's a, so there's a system, uh, say like in a continuum, uh, we have a metric. Then there we can really directly compute this gravitational sum term. And, uh, uh, so we get this formula. And for that system, there's the edge states. And uh, then we compute the edge states, which is a conformal field theory. And uh, we can compute this uh, 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 a charge or thermal hall conductance. Then we find that that thermal hall conductance really is really given by this C. And then, then for the lattice system, which you don't have metric, then we cannot do this. But however, for lattice system, we can still study their boundary and still can compute their thermal hall conductance. Then from thermal hall conductance, we infer maybe C must be like this. Yeah, I was slightly just confused about this. Uh, you are starting, I mean, the uh, system where you started from boundaryless, uh, uh, I mean, the genus. Uh, yeah, these two lines have no boundary, indeed. No boundary, right? Yes. So no edge state, things like that. Yeah. Right. Yeah, so that's completely right. So, so, so when you have a no, uh, when you have a no boundary, then uh, and from lattice model is hard, yeah. Uh, but here I want to mention that in, the, in just a recent, uh, there's a uh, there's a way just from lattice model from some kind of entanglement structure, one can come to the C directly uh, from lattice model. Yeah, yeah. So so there's a way to that. It's highly non-trivial. Yeah. The reason non-trivial is falling really is funny. This expression is an expression from geometry. There's a manifold, notion of manifold. And the lattice have no motion manifold. The ability to compute this number from lattice model directly really means that uh, you somehow understand how manifold emerge from a lattice. So, so, so th that calculation would, uh, would, uh, would uh, touch this issue, you know, how the structure manifold, information manifold can come up from pure lattice calculation. And so they really involve emerging gravity. Um, no, I don't know what to say. It's a, I don't think I have prove anything. It's a, <laughs> yeah, but, but there's a, there's a, there's some argument, there's some example, right. uh, which it looks reasonable. So, so we think the result is general, and uh, uh, yeah. Prove this was the curiosity. Yeah, the the direct calculation in this direction is uh, is very difficult because uh, uh, from the lattice model, you need to compute the corresponding space time metric, and then from there to get there. And uh, yeah, I don't know. People go from that direction, and if you want to have a lattice model, one usually just direct compute. There's a edge states, or compute there's some some uh some kind of uh commutator of some spectral entanglement thing, and from there to extract this C. But why that computation give rise to C? Because uh, uh there are some other system we do know their metric, and uh, for that system. Uh, the same calculation find agreement, and uh, then then we think, oh, yeah, that must be, uh, <laughs> yeah. 
So let me try to understand the second part that the holonomy of the vector wonder can be. So let me suppose the G2 gauge theory. So let me consider on, on a torus. So let me consider two non-contractable loop. So yeah, here and here. So no, but this non-contractable loop is a, it's not in a space non-contractable, it's in the moduli space non-contractable loop. It's a, it's a deformation of a system. Mm -hmm. Where this deformation form a loop, but this loop, this deformation cannot shrink to no deformation. So it's a it's a non contact loop on the moduli space. Still, I cannot have some. You mentioned about GIJ I and mean, some metric. Yes. Yeah. So, so it's a it's a way of deforming metric. Mm -hmm. And uh, so, yeah, maybe let me just uh, give some example here. You, you, you'll see. Yeah. So like a, like a, we have a torus and we can define the metric. And uh, so that you find it like a shape of torus changes. And then when you, but when you define to, to this way, you find that these two torus, although looks at like different shape, have different metric, but you can do the coordinate transmission because uh, the torus, so this tor this one, after coordinate transmission is really this one. These are the same thing. So this from here to here is a loop. But this because they are, but this loop somehow I can see is non contractible You cannot shrink this loop to nothing. So this is a so this this is the kind of loop we are talking about. And uh, so so here I just want to uh, say that so there's a. Uh, uh, there's a relation between this topological order and topological new field theory. You know, what is the topological quantum field? The topological quantum field so it means that uh, in a space time, close space time, you get a uh, you get a number, that's a partition function. And uh, on the space, you get a vector space. Um, on the on m dimensional space, you get a vector space. If m dimensional space is a boundary of a space time, you get a particular vector in this vector space. Okay. So so from topology other point of view is that uh, this uh, space is a partition function, total partition function, and this uh, this uh, vector space on the on the space is this degenerate ground state manifold subspace of degenerate ground states, and here when you have particular evolution from big bang, and uh, then evolve into this space, you end up with a particular ground state in this ground state of space. So all these are related. So some question, yeah. Okay, no. And so, so therefore, uh, so therefore, this uh, uh, this topology order actually is a uh, uh, is some in some way is a is is a can be viewed as a, a, a topological continuum field theory. It's a kind of condensed matter realization, a UV regulation of that. Okay, so with this, uh, let's try to uh, consider uh, some kind of classification of topology order. Um, Okay. So uh yeah. So actually the in one dimensional, so actually this formula for mapping class group, you know, for the on the torus, n dimensional torus, is the SL N V. Okay, N is the dimension of a torus. And if uh, for, for n to one, we get this one dimensional. The mapping class is trivial, you know, and so therefore, uh, uh, and uh, and also there's no gravitational term, term, term. So actually, uh, there's no in one plus dimension. There's a uh, there's no topology order. That's it. If this conjecture works, so there's no topology order. And uh, uh, but however, if you if you search in literature, there's a lot of discussion of one plus one dimensional TCFT. So there is a there is a non-trivial one plus one dimensional TFT. Then you say, oh, well, what do you mean? And you, you know, here you say topology order and TFT related, uh, and there's no topology in one dimension, but uh, there's one trick of TFT. I think uh, the, uh, this TFT is uh, studied as a mathematical object. And from physical point of view, this uh, one plus dimensional TFT is unstable. They have, a, they have a degenerate ground state on the circle. And this the underground state is not topologically protected. It's, it can be split by perturbation. 
but the mathematician uh, do not uh, study this uh, perturbation. And uh, what they studied, there is the exist a fine-toned physical system realizing this one plus energy capital T, and that is true. So there's a fine toning. And uh, if you add the stability condition, you say your TKFT should be stable against arbitrary perturbation, then uh, then this, all these one plus one TKFT is unstable. And so, so that's why it's like a fine toned uh, thing. Uh, so that's why uh, uh, there's, there's a little bit of uh, difference. Okay. And uh, so, uh, so for the uh, for for two di uh, for two dimensional uh, topology order, and uh, maybe three dimensional space time TKFT, and uh, as mentioned that we have Grand degeneracy, we have this vector bundle, and this uh, this uh, uh, the, there's a local U1 curvature which is give us uh, this uh, chiral central charge, and uh, for in two dimensional torus, and uh, this marking collapse of SL2Z, which are generated by this thin twist, this thin twist, and now it's 90 degree rotation. So that's generated this uh, uh, SL2Z. So therefore, this non billing part uh, is a representation of SL2Z. And uh, uh, somehow, yeah, this part is a kind of a tricky. And uh, so somehow, this, uh, uh, these two representations combine into some. Uh, some kind of project rotation. You mean there's a the central charge somehow appear here. So usually for the for the for the SL2V trans uh, uh reputation, st cube should equal to c and c squared to one. So this if c equal to zero, that is a representation. If c not equal to zero, actually we have a some kind of twisted, some some kind of project representation. So so this is a so so at the end uh, so this is called modular data. S, T, and C is a modular data. And whether can this uh, characterize all topology order is a question. And the answer is no, as I mentioned. Yeah. And there's a counter examples, but the, for the genus two, if you do the same thing, we can resolve counter example. Then there's a question. If you include genus two, whether it's complete or not. Maybe not. Um, then we should include genus three and genus four, etc. But actually there's a, for people study this kind of thing, there's a reason to be it would stop somewhere, maybe genius to genius three, because higher genius can be decomposed into a lower genius. Uh, genius one is too much. What well, including genius two, maybe at the most genius three, seems that's general enough to uh, to cover all the cases. So I don't know. Yeah, this is the open question, and there's a hope. Maybe genius two, genius three is enough to cover everything. Yes. For a given GFT. Let me suppose to have some metric G mu nu. Yeah. So then how can I know the modular space structure for given GFT G mu nu? So how can I know the genus structure, for example? Uh, the, Usually it's a mapping yes. class group because uh, you can see, uh, here, uh, because of this, uh, uh, because of this, uh, we only care about the, uh, representation of a pi one. Of modular space. For the pi one modular space, it's really correspond to mapping class group. And so therefore we don't need to know detailed information of modular space. As long as we know it's a mapping class group, then we can we can then we can carry on, we can do this kind of thing. And then now here is a proposal, is a, really the conjecture is that the mapping class group is for the torus is really SL to the N. This is the result for the for the manifold. It's not a result for lattice model. <laughs> and uh, so we jump, so we say lattice model and the manifold may be similar. So we're using the result from manifold to conjecture that the pi one of the mapping, uh, pi one of a lattice model modular space is also an SLZN. Uh, SLNZ, yeah. Does it mean, you just put the Given lattice model. So does it mean you put, put the lattice model on torus? Then yes. Yeah, we put lattice model on torus. The lattice model have a purely bounded yes. in both direction. But however, coupling constant can be pretty arbitrary. Yes. So that's play rule like metric. Metric.
like in Latin mode, you can hop in x direction, y direction, or mm. x plus y direction, you know. This kind of hopping amplitude gives you some sense of a local metric, and uh, that's play a rule of metric. But you just put that photometric has some torus structure. Yeah, the, the, the lattice already have a periodic boundary condition, so you, topologically it's a torus. The metric is something more detailed about the shape of the torus, not that you can tone, you can adjust. That's give you a modulized space. <laughs> Okay, so uh, so here is really the main thing. So now we have this a uh, uh, quantitative description of a uh, of a uh, of a uh, uh, topologic order in some sense. Uh, the lot let, let's stick with st stc. It's uh, easier. Uh, even even though it's incomplete, let's just uh, carry on with this uh, with this uh, with this data. It's uh, pretty complete actually. Uh, we don't miss too much, so let's carry on. So the so the issue is the following: for every topology order, we can obtain STC. This we can obtain this data. Okay. So now let's think about the suppose we have some kind of we just give data STC which satisfy this uh, condition, you know. Uh, so STC satisfy this condition, and uh, we can find many triplet have this satisfy this condition. Then the question is that, are they describe a, a topology order for, for every possible choice of triplet? The answer said no, that's a, the condition we have is a too weak. So, uh, 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 so, so actually, uh, we need to find more conditions to restrict uh, the, uh, the allowed STC. We hope we find enough condition. So the STC is satisfied those conditions always correspond to a topology order. But maybe not one, maybe several, because STC, STC is not full data, it's a partial data, maybe several. So the, so the key question is that, uh, how to find more conditions? How to find more conditions? Yeah, that, that, that is a question. And uh, to really uh, uh, come to addressing this question, and uh, one need to have uh, become something uh, more sophisticated. Okay, one need to, Go to the uh, uh, study topology extension. Actually, study topology extension is like a study uh, space with punctures, you know. And uh, so, uh, for example, for the torus can be viewed as a sphere with a handle. You can make handle very very thin and remove that. You get a sphere with two punctures. Now, hopefully, this uh, this uh, mapping class group proposition of a torus. Became the like braiding of punctures. So yeah, it's uh, not unreasonable to see there may be some connection uh, like that. Uh, so so therefore this uh, so therefore we can study the sphere with the punctures, and then there's also a vector bundle on the modular space of the sphere with the punctures, and that vector bundle may characterize this. And actually, the mapping class group for sphere with the puncture is a braid group. So indeed, uh, it's true that this. Uh, the, the braiding statistics, uh, this phase from the braiding is characterized a vector bundle on the sphere with the punctures. And uh, so, so therefore, so now you can see that there are two ways to study topology. Either use a vector bundle on space with all puncture, but the space have all kinds of topology. That's a one direction. Another direction is that we assume space have simple topology, just a sphere, but with adding a lot of punctures. Then the then the mapping class group of that is a braid group. Then the representation of braid group is uh, also a vector bundle. Uh, uh, then that may also describe it. And now you think uh, maybe you should study space with all kind of topology with all kind of puncture, <laughs> and that vector bundle surely should describe everything. <laughs> so now you can see that we are making some conjecture here that we don't want to do that general thing. We either want to study the simple space with many punctures or complicated space with no punctures. In these two extremes, maybe that's enough information to characterize topology order. So that's the kind of thing we do. And so, so now we'll switch gear a little bit. We, now we want to concentrate this picture. The simple space with the punctures 
what they are breeding and things like that. And this actually led to the uh, module tensor category uh, picture. So actually this vector bundle on this, uh, uh, on, on this uh, boundary space of a punctures correspond to module tensor category. Yeah, so basically, basically that's a, that is a, a statement. So this module tensor category have this kind of winding history. You know, there's a study of TKFT and this relation to the component field theory that witnessed the, the Jules Connolly paper. And then, uh, then studying TKFT, a uh, CF, uh, conformal field of CFT, and uh, there's a, they find there's a module tensor gather inside the CFT. So from here, you can see there's a connection from this, uh, uh TKFT to module tensor category. That's a, uh, maybe that's the earliest uh, indication, uh, there's such a, uh, connection. And, uh, so, uh, 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 so, 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 so today we try to, uh, using this, uh, uh using this expression and they're braiding their fusion, uh, try to directly see the module tensor category coming from this. Actually, in the early days, uh, there's a, already one indication. This expectation and the uh, quantity dynamics are related. It's really this picture. You can see, suppose we have an XY is a space. We can, we can create a pair of uh, onions and a tunnel through the space go around the loop. So that, that's like an instant time, which is change this uh, degenerate ground state to another set, degenerate ground state, some kind of uh, unitary operator doing that. Then we can also do another pair of uh, onion, but in the Y direction. And then do the X direction, but in the opposite way, and the Y direction in the opposite way. So this kind of four tunnel loop of onions, can be deformed into these two linked loop of Anya. And this kind of linked loop is like a space-time picture of a moving one Anya going around another Anya. And we get mutual statistics from there. And, uh, and so that means that these four operator form algebra. They do not commute. The commutation relation gives you this actual phase factor, which is mutual statistics. And this, uh, this phase factor is really just, uh, this, uh, 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 actually, I, I should say mutual statistics. Uh, this one is a mutual statistics, not a self statistic. So there's two pi p over q. And the denominator q, uh, uh, is, uh, I think the ground state is the multiple of this the denominator q. So from here is a really very strong indication that uh, this, uh, this, uh, module tensor category and uh, this ground state have a very close relation. But how to get this very systematic relation? How to, how to see them, uh, uh, more systematically? So this is, a uh, uh, so yeah, this, uh, now from here, we start to really introduce this module tensor category, but from kind of physical, physics point of view. Okay. Uh, before we proceed, yeah. um, so we started from the, uh, kept system. Yeah. And then the, you introduce some topological excitation. Yes. Which actually is not a ground state, right? Yes. So what is the, uh, energy scale of this topological excitation compared with the, the original gap? Uh, can be same order. Yeah. Uh, can be same order. Yeah. So the topological excitation can be of order of cutoff energy scale. Don't have to be very small. Yeah. And, uh, uh, but, but however, by creating these loops, you, 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 you need to generate a mapping of a mapping between ground state. This is like an instant time, uh, which is generate the mapping between ground state. But uh, you request that uh, those extensions should be, I guess, uh, within this gap. Original no, gap. One, one don't. You don't. You one don't. Yeah. And, uh, uh, actually the reason we don't uh, actually is really, uh, uh, will appear here. Uh, I say, I hope this answers your question. You know, what do you mean by topology extension? Because when your topology extension have very high energy, it will decay into many other things. Then it's not well defined. Yeah, there's an issue. What's topology extension? Why do you have to ground the state? Uh, I mean, the exactly. Yeah. yeah. So, 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 like that. that's a later, uh, uh, this, this, this really, uh, try to define this notion very carefully and you'll see this structure. Yeah, really, is really here. And then you define this topologization very carefully. You'll see the module tensor category. 
and you'll see the ground state energy on all that all that associated property. It's all coming from there. It's just like in the beginning, we define gap system very carefully. You can sequence the system. Then you you get you finally get a lot of things from this very careful definition. Here we try to do the same thing, try to very carefully define this uh, point like extension. And uh, without the uh, interference of this uh, uh they decay into some other things. Uh that's mixing very complicated. Yeah. So the idea is that uh, so we have a Hamiltonian which have an energy gap like this spectrum. Okay. The idea is that we add the traps. Okay. We add the traps. The trap just like we have some, we modify the Hamiltonian near this point or near the loops, we add the traps. When you're adding traps, then we have a spectrum with this uh, new modified Hamiltonian. We assume the modified Hamiltonian also have energy gap, also have this kind of spectrum. Then, but however, now the new ground state subspace will be the, will be new wave function. We call this a new wave function is a wave function for excitation. So basically ground state of a Hamiltonian with a trap is a wave function for excitation. Yeah. So basically this is really definition for gap the system. The excitation is something trappable. Something can be trapped. So this is a, a crucial step. We, that's the definition of a point like or string like excitation. Something can be trapped. Okay. Then we start everything we start from there. From here we can derive everything. Yes. So just so for for like Laughlin wave functions, would you say a quasi hole? Yeah. Is precisely this? It's precisely that, yeah. You can you can modify the trap. Okay. Actually, so let 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 let's uh let there's something I not not understand. Let me just uh, go on. So in a in Laughlin wave function, we know there's a fractional charge particle. Suppose we add only one trap. Trap only one third the charge. Then suddenly you find something really strange. You you have a sphere within the charge. Then with the one trap have only one third charge. What's going on? What happens when you add one trap? You don't have this kind of spectrum. It's complex because uh, there are two other one third particle moving around on sphere without localization. They get continuum. So to get energy gap, you have to have three trap simultaneously. And so, so therefore, to have this spectrum, you require you have to have three traps. So, so this is implicit. So, when I say we require this spectrum, we already say the number of traps should satisfy a certain condition to 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 use this way. Yeah, uh, that's very important. The shuttle thing. Okay. Then, and here there's another shuttle is that for point like station we have no problem, but for string excitation. Uh, what the trap Hamiltonian should be localized near string, but what a long string is should be local or not local. Yeah, this is a, basically the open question. Yeah, we don't know what is the proper definition. Whether the local one is a more proper or non-local one is more proper. And I think uh, I disagree with my collaborators on this point. I myself prefer non-local one. Yeah, in our paper. Sometimes we say local, sometimes we non-local, so we cover both sides. And uh, I think in this paper, we try to say maybe non-local one. I think non-local one is a possibility it should be considered seriously. But however, the theory for non-local one is uh, not developed. So we, I don't know, yeah, we actually at the moment, I don't know what is the proper thing. Anyway, uh, so this is some shuttle, another shuttle that is kind of open question. Okay. so. So now, now let's say, uh, now we have something can be trapped, but uh, the thing trapped at the sigma can see one may be trivial. So how do you know this particular trap trap for trivial extension? So that's really about the type of extension. What mean by trivial? What's the non-trivial? And the trivial really means that suppose uh, uh, we can have a unitary operator which only use up act on the site near can see one. Some local unitary operator. If this local unitary operator can rotate, uh, rotate the wave function to the wave function with zero trap. So you can see when you don't have KC1, that means there's no trap near KC1. So that's another the trap Hamiltonian, another ground state. 
if this ground state can be rotated into the ground state without any trap at Kc1, it can be rotated away. It means that this, the trap extension at Kc1 can be created uh, annihilated by local operator. So it can rotate in a way it can be destroyed by local operator. That means trivial. And this is a very important uh, notion. So uh, so this, this kind of notion gave rise to equivalence relation. If something non-trivial, suppose there, there's some extension non-trivial cannot be rotated into a trivial one, uh, but uh, two non-trivial ones may be connected to each other by rotation. So there's a, that's give us a meaning of types. If two traps uh, can be rotated into each other smoothly without closing energy gap, then we say these two, two traps actually de de define same type of extension. You know, originally, extension are labeled by this uh, delta H Hamiltonian. It's a very non-universal, a lot of parameter. But when you implement this uh, equivalence relation, there's only a few types at the end, there's only a few types. And this is a so-called onion type. You know, this topologic station type is defined this way, very carefully using traps. Yeah, we get that. Okay. So then there's come something which took me a few years to understand. <laughs> that is a, the simple type and the composite type. Usually in physics, we don't worry about this. And it turns out that we always consider simple type. But the mathematician is much more careful and they have this notion of simple type and composite type. And what's the difference? The simple type means the stable type. <laughs> usually when you have a trap, trapping some extension, you have a ground state subspace. We usually automatically assume this ground subspace is stable. It's generic. It's not fine-toned. But it could be fine-toned. Means that if you add a little perturbation, change a little bit, they may split. <laughs> So this is such a new situation. And uh, usually in physics, we think that this is illegal trap. We don't think about this trap. It's a too fine tone. But the mathematician treat this trap as a legal, as a, the, as a stable one. <laughs> then they call this, uh, this trap is an, is composite. It's accidental degeneracy of a, of a too simple one. So, so actually the extension in the mathematics, in the mathematics have simple type with a stable one, or composite type means with accidental degeneracy. And this notion turns out to be very, very uh, important. Uh, that is uh, the uh, composite extension can be viewed as a direct sum of a two simple excitation. Actually, we know this kind of notion. We just don't emphasize that because we have a, Fusion of two spin one half. It's a spin zero and spin one. It's not a bound state of spin zero and spin one. It's a, it's a odd. But the odd not superposition of spin zero and spin one. It's something. Actually, the direct sum of a Hilbert space. Yeah. You know, that's why I'm very careful to writing plus with a circle it means a direct sum. Uh, because when I first in reading this, uh, in some mathematical book, is they just have plus. But knowing quantum mechanics, I'm thinking of this plus in superposition. Then I don't understand what's the, what is meaning of this uh, uh, fusion group. But it's really a direct sum. Yeah. Okay. So then finally, we can define the data uh, for module tensor cardio with the, all these uh, notions and the types. Okay. And uh, and the 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 the, the, the most important thing is that uh, when you have a suppose we have a two track trapping two simple, two stable extension I and J. Then if you stay very, very far away, these two traps can be viewed as a single trap. But this single trap is very special. You have a two separate locations, very special single traps. So in that time, it's a fine point. So this is a two trap. When you view a single trap, the fine point can represent the composite of this space. So that's a fusion. So we have a two I, two single extension I and J together. If maybe the composite will have K1, K2, K3, some composite. And there can be several K1, so maybe K1 may appear twice. Uh, K2 may appear once. So then we formally write this as a direct sum of an NIJK with a K. NIJK is a non nice integer. It's a zero means the K doesn't appear. The one is appear once. Two means the same K appear twice. 
right in the theory. Yeah. yeah. And this AI data is defined as fusion unit. So that's the one of the important data we want to understand is the fusion unit. So you can say physically, it's just a just a, like a fusion of this uh, kind. You know, so there's a really complete physical understanding of this model country particle data. Okay. So this is the example of the one half fusion and the coefficient is uh, one half one half uh, to zero is one, one half one half to one is one, one half one half to one half is zero, things like that. So this kind of fusion coefficient. And then there's associativity. When we have three stations, we can fuse the I J first, then fuse the K, or fuse the J K first, then fuse the I. You should get the same thing. So that means that this N I J K non like either satisfy this kind of a, a distribution. Okay. So that will start with the, the numerical distribution of the module center category. There's a lot of data. The data has a lot of condition. And the solution of those conditions is a mild way of the model in my class. It's very concrete. You know, in terms of object morphic narrow the point is uh, very abstract, so you can't just see what it is. But this way is a very concrete. So you know, computer can understand that. And then there's a, a notion of quantum dimension. And that is already here. And uh, you can see that the T one half have an internal degree from two. So the quantum dimension is four. And we have two T on half, the internal degree will be four. So T in zero is one, T in one is three. So four times two is one plus three. So you can see that uh, the internal degree freedom and the, the fusion coefficient and the are relation. They, they cannot be arbitrary. It turns out that if you know the NIJK, you'll know the internal degree freedom. And this, uh, so computing internal, internal degree freedom from NIJK fusion unit is like computing quantum dimension, which, uh, which is very, very important to quantity. You know, every quantity party has a lot of quantity quantum numbers. So quantum dimension is the most important to quantity, uh, property for the particle. That's like just internal degree freedom of this particle. What is, what is it? Hmm? Uh, the, the quantum dimension is a two for the one half. But when you choose the two to the one half together, the total dimension will be four. So this a four dimension can be equal the direct sum of one dimension and a three dimension. That's two zero, two one is two, two zero is two one. So that is a way to see the how quantum dimension interacts with the fusion. Have so, but uh, amazingly, so how do you compute the quantum dimension? So, compute the quantum dimension is that we want to let's consider here. Then we have a lot of expression. It's a lot, of, a lot of identical ones. I, 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 not a lot of them. And then we we we, we compute the what is the dimension of the fusion state of here is the money and the I. That's correct from the completely different way. Because those kind of I can feel this identity. Yeah. And uh, so, so it's really, it should be that this, this dimension of the confusion space with the many, many I, when you feel what is the general subspace with the many, many I. The answer is that uh, how many ways we have feel the many, many I, how many times you get a trivial space? One is a trivial space. How many ways you get a trivial space? Okay. So it should be trivial. I and I feel they can make that M1, M1 I feel feels make that M2 and better. And M and N feels that I will get a one. But we make many, many copies of one. Now how many copies tell you what is degenerate? Once you know the degenerate of this uh, of this uh, I particle, you take N two, take N two of this degenerate. Yeah, here. So this degenerate the degeneracy can be viewed as the power of the degeneracy because we want to view this total fusion space as a tensor product of individual vector space. Because that's a, we have many, many particles far, far apart, the total degree freedom to be tensor product of individual vector space. 
So the dimension should be completely wiped out. If each individual vector space have a dimension di, then di to the nth power is equal to the dimension of the space. Uh, it depends on the di. Can I ask? Okay, so uh, is this uh, uh, I mean the fusion link concept or, uh, can go beyond the component field theory? Or yeah, so yeah. you know they keep standing in the technology. So it's mm. the topic of a gap expansion in the topology. So after any gap space expansion, now and once you can have the trap equation, you have two many. So all the incoming from this trap and the equation, yeah, you are, you are all the top line up. Right? So the bottom line is that uh, in a gap space, the counter category theory is a natural theory to describe the top space of the equation. Yeah. And here I try to present that picture. I define the equation using trap. Then using trap, try to operate all the data. So similar question is uh, can this fusion ring can be defined for the uh, system where we don't have any quasi particle? Uh, okay. Uh, actually, uh, uh, okay. Let Let's answer this way. Uh, if you're using half idea, it doesn't work. Yeah. Yeah. With the gapless path, it doesn't work. Okay. But however, as I mentioned, that the uh, the the we have a gapless equation. You don't have you may have emergent symmetry. So emergent symmetry, I will explain later. We will correct some of the topological order in one higher dimension. We have energy gap have a trap. So the fusion ring leading one higher dimension. So that's why I explained here. I first explained the one higher dimension thing. And this one higher dimension topology order turns on the emergent symmetry of a gapless system. So actually, for every gapless system, there is a fusion ring. But in this way, that the, the emergent symmetry is topology order in one higher dimension, and the fusion ring leads in one higher dimension. Yeah. So so this is this is this is description of emergent symmetry. Like, yeah, I, I guess that's right because I think that even conformal field theory doesn't have any quasi particle. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. If, you, if you consider very carefully, actually, you know, modern counter gravity in the whole field is actually living in one kind of dimension, not living in the same dimension. Yeah, it's a, uh, but then, you know, history is very interesting. You know, we go through circles and then we understand that, oh, okay. You know, people do big research, then find a very similar model structure from this angle. That's amazing. Okay, so I will finish that after this slide. Is that the so how to compute this? Uh, we have used many man I can get how many one you get. How to compute that? We always have this few conditions. You know, this uh. uh I, 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 M1, tell us how many M1 do you get? Okay. Then for each M1, this M1 fuel to I, tell us how many M2 do you get? So total, total way to get M2 by giving three I to this product. They can go on. Then as I is for the last distance to be one. So this way you get that the fuel to so many I can get how many one do you get by summing all this M I M2. And this expression can be used as a matrix. We can define a matrix like n i like this. The n i j, n i matrix, the so the j k is the index is a given by this. And then the this expression is really the n i to the n minus some power. I'm taking this particular component i one to one. Yeah, this is the max. However, when n is very large, we don't care which Element we take because we know that the leading contribution from the largest element. And the, then there's the other thing don't scale with them. You know, they don't care. The thing which is scale linearly is, uh, is given by the, by the largest eigenvalue. So there's a largest eigenvalue of this matrix. It's all common. 
and which is not really easy. It's an algebraic number. So this is the most amazing thing uh, in the uh, in Pablo Felder. The quality particle may have a fractionalized degree of freedom. You know, their internal degree of freedom is not easy. It's a, but uh, but it makes sense because we are choosing this n particle. This one is easier. That physical theory is easier. So you know, but this is time to fail. If you really do this way, each e I could have a non-digit dimension. Yeah, this kind of finding thing. So this is a one of the most important properties of a quality particle. And also it's a non-abelian statistic. That is, for the abelian particle, some dimension always be one. For non-abelian particle, not be one. So experimentally, if you want to probe a non-abelian statistic, this is easy to measure. Not by grading, this is unitary, non-unitary, the unitary matrix from grading, that's much harder. The measuring degree of freedom is much easier. Yeah. So this is a, the start of a modular function gravity theory that we talk about Jordan. So I will stop here. Thank you very much. Now, yeah, open for questions. Any questions? So you mentioned in experiment, if I try to measure the non-abelian particle, then detection of DI would be the easiest. Like, yeah. do you have any experimental scheme in mind to detect that? Yeah, usually the, uh, yeah. Um, it's my interesting. Yeah. 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 But, but as and, you, uh, yeah. Thank you. Questions? Yeah, let me. Uh, I think I still don't understand the very basic thing. So, why is the mapping class group of the moduli space of the QFT can distinguish, can give some classification scheme for anyone, anyone's? Is there any intuitive picture? Can I think? So changing the metric in the gift, then we can detect some so topological some structure of the theory. So can distinguish some excitations, anion, anions. So how can I understand that somewhat more intuitively? So uh, the thing that so here I can say that uh, you know we spend a lot of time to to, to explain or uh, to argue why the quantum geometry is a some logical feature which corresponds to intrinsic space. And uh, and then here we just want to generalize this uh, idea a little bit. You know, this uh, dimension of a uh, Young ground state is just a dimension of a vector in the vector bundle. And uh, if the dimension of a vector in the vector bundle is a uh, robust, then we are hoping maybe the other property vector bundle also robust. So this is the motivation to say, yeah, maybe to have more data, we not only consider the dimension vector in the vector bundle, we consider the whole vector bundle. You know, we have a kind of system. So naturally, have this vector number. We can always uh, define this vector number by by changing the Hamiltonian. If the other the other one plus take the low case, we just have that number. The most the important thing that uh, uh, why some properties in the vector number is a universal characterize the phase map, intrinsic phase map, this is not true. But we have same question: Why the other one say one the other say? Is a universal property characterizing a phase matter. Um, 
And that one's already quite unfair. If you believe that one, if you believe the theory of one thing, is a totally classified in intrinsic thermodynamic state, then it's a easier to understand. Uh, yeah, some of the exact model can do the same thing. So it's really an effort to extract the same path, the extract the topology environment, which is classified in intrinsic space, so somewhat on my space. Yeah, that actually yeah. the, the effort. Mm -hmm. And the, the yeah. next slide, I try to explain a little bit why why some features, not not every feature that's not going to be a topology environment, but some feature like a little, little C. You know, this is a little, 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 so, 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 so here, but I'm, I'm some arguments. Certain features of that from the topology one, they play the same rule as the general one thing. Some of the response to the space of the space of math, that this part is completely different. Yeah, yeah, thank you. I have a small technical question. So, you mentioned the relation between ST. S and T. Yeah. And uh, what was the argument? S, there is some relation between the S and T. Oh, uh, yeah. Uh, uh, first, uh, the argument is that the Taiwan theory is a good And so, this uh, is a hollow move. This is a basic view of the mass of Taiwan. So, this is a from the presentation of Taiwan. So basically, that is the that is the motivation of this condition because this S and T is the generator of this multiple group, and the generator of the S of two V has the relation S goes to S T two, and uh, this S T that one a square of that is the one, and the here we just add another phase factor so that this is kind of projected. Right, but you certainly don't request this S L two G invariance, right? No, it, it's not the one. It's a, it really is a, uh, it's a topological move because uh, this uh, this is you this is a non-diagonal part is a topological, and uh, so 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 we have a four on one loop, four loop one to another loop. It just a compose, and uh, so certainly in general, this non-valid variable is not. Uh, not universal. Then, then seems a magic because of uh, the Taiwan loop, there's many, many non classical loops. So you default move a little bit of U to change. But here they don't. Uh, this U is the same for all the class of the uh, uh, homotopic class of the loop. It's the same. The composition of the two loops, it just gives you a, a representation of, uh, of Taiwan. So U is the representation of Taiwan. <coughs> It, I, I don't call that an environment. It's not symmetry. It's just a, the composition rule for non invariant. Yeah, the so non invariant is just composed. Uh, when, the, when the loop composed, the non the number is composed. Yeah, that's the answer. More questions? So. So according to your example uh, of how to count uh, quantum dimension uh, using spin one half, yeah. part, it's obvious when you have a bound state, singly bound state of spin one half, then quantum dimension is one and the, that object is uh, abelian, right? Spin single. <laughs> But, Actually, we have a similar issue, you know, I have a lot of being case theory. 
uh, sometimes is a great charge to not engage the you know, this reputation of great group. And the this, uh, this great charge can be the hard demand computation, but if it's a demand computation actually becomes a charge. So then you say in the in the in the, in the non in history when the great charge is a not in the statistical model. Again, it's a, a, a trick. And, and, and in fact, yeah, totally right. Physics would say they are both yeah. uh, yeah. they have yeah. a yeah. physics. But the mathematician using quantum dimension, they are not in the physics. But uh, here, I do uh, want to mention that the uh, mathematician have a little bit of reason. Like, uh, we have a spin on half. When you're braiding two spin on half together, you say you should have, you should have not no face. But this lab is very tricky. Because uh, because we don't have good things how far away the, 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 you have a four dimensional jump space. Yeah. When you break them, how do you show there's no not not the, the four variable matrix is trivial? Especially if there's some spin optical coming there. Uh, when you even when you break them very slowly, you, you may still have this some field thing. And uh, so actually if you think about that. It's high enough trail. It's, it's mature dependent. In the mature we see all the company, you have a non trivial bit. So then you may say, oh, maybe the mature we see all the company, uh, it's not being without the other thing, it's not being. So actually, uh, when you have multi component of particles, but when you have particles with a non zero point dimension, the braiding can be very tricky. And uh, saying braiding is trivial is uh, too fast. You know, uh, even in kind of matter, there are situations of braiding can be untreated, even for spin on particles. And, uh, uh, but usually, yeah, so, so actually, using braiding to define statistics is, uh, is kind of delicate. Yeah. And, uh, so, but uh, in condensed matter, we, we know everyday experiment spin one up particles are abelian. Uh, Yes and no. I think that when you have a spin out of coupling, when the braiding is not up, I will make some use of Okay, okay. Oh, okay. If you have, if you have. Maybe this is a very interesting question. That is, uh, in, a, in, a, in a material with a strong spin out of the coupling, when you have a gas you know, are moving around each other, you know, if, uh, uh, you know, who knows? Maybe this class is not ordinary both on class. We have different behavior. That 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 that, 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 that is thing concerns me. Yeah. 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 Thank you. Are there any questions in Zoom audiences? I'm just asking. <laughs> if not, thank you very much. Let's end today.